Hello, it is Monday. Welcome to another weekly reading vlog. We are nearly out of the never ending month of January and I am very ready for it. I haven't had a bad month, but I also haven't had like an amazing month. I've had some really, really great parts, but I have also struggled quite a lot this last month with loneliness. And I'm sure that feeling's not necessarily gonna go away. However, I feel like it's gonna get better with the plans that I have for the rest of the year because January I just, I didn't make enough plans in January to give myself enough things throughout the month to look forward to and keep me going in terms of like socialising and that was a mistake. So I have learned from that and will not be doing that going into February. But I did achieve some of my New Year's resolutions. Why well, can't say resolution? I achieved some of my New Year's resolutions. I really wanted to do one thing each month. Obviously we've only had one month of this so far, but I want to do one thing each month that pushes or scares me in some way or furthers me in some kind of way. And I did that quite a few times in January. So that was good. I also bought my new car in January, which I was very, very excited about and still am. And it's so nice to have like that, like adult car almost like it's such a nice car that I just absolutely love and it has everything in it that I want and it feels so safe and I just I'm, I'm so pleased with that so that's been great also yesterday and over the weekend I had my friend down from uni which was absolutely lovely I haven't seen her in years and that was really nice to do that as well I've also read some good books and I've read questionable ones as well but it's been a good it's been a good month for reading I haven't read too much which was one of the things I wanted to do as well because last year I read 20 books in January and I just got a bit overwhelmed by it. So this year, I don't know how many I've read. I think seven or eight, seven? I don't know, I think seven. And that's that's been way more manageable for me. So that's great. But as we are on the last day of the month today, I wanted to wait until tomorrow to start my fictionary TBR for February. That video is now live. If you wanted to check it out, I'm gonna try and remember to link it up here. I don't know why I do this to myself because I always, always forget, but it, it might be there or <laughs> you can click on my YouTube and there's playlists for my TBRs, but anyway, there'll be some books I'm reading. So I kind of need to tactically do this because on February 14th, we have House of Sky and Breath, which is the second book in the Crescent City series by Sarah J Maas. So I need to make sure I am free of everything I'm currently reading on that day. I don't want to pause a book to resume it later on after I finish that book, but I absolutely want to start that book on the 14th. I'm doing Patreon sprints as little Valentine's Day sprints on that day. And I really, really want to be like fully immersed into that book that night. I'm really excited for it. So it's gonna be kind of quite a lot of sprinting for me reading that book and anyone else obviously reading whatever they're reading. But like I, I wanted to do just like a fun Valentine's Day sprints and it just happened that that was the same day. So really excited for that. But yeah, that means I'm not sure what I'm gonna be starting reading tomorrow. I have some poetry and I have some middle grade on the TBR and I don't know whether I'd be beneficial reading those first or saving those till later in the month. I. I don't know. That's the fun of figuring out my TBR. However, I am sprinting tonight with my patrons and I will be reading a book tonight, kind of. I mean, I am gonna be reading, but I'm not gonna be like physically reading. So I'm gonna be listening to the audiobook of House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. This is the first book in the Crescent City series and this is a reread for me. I first read this one when it came out in 2020 and this, yeah, this is my first time rereading it. I'm <laughs> this far through at the moment. I started on audio last week and it's, just as good as I remembered. I've tabbed loads of bits. I haven't written anything about why I've tabbed these pages. And now I'm looking at them and I'm like, why did I tab that? I don't even, it's not like it's spectacular lines or moments. I don't know why I tabbed them. I'm sure as I get to the end, there will be more sense to it. But at the moment I'm just like, what was I like, why? Why did I tab that? But I would love to know what made me want to tab that. Anyway, this is what I will be reading tonight on sprints and also listening to as an audiobook throughout the rest of the week. I, I, I don't know how long it's gonna take me to finish it. I think I've got about nine hours left in the audiobook and I listen on double speed, which I know for some people that is way too fast, but for me, I just, I can do 1.5 to double speed depending on the narrator, but I can't really click through to it if it's slower. I don't know why, but I just, I can really absorb myself and lock myself into it when it's faster and I can just completely fall into listening to it and just become like, everything I do just is done with headphones on because I just can't stop listening to it. And yeah, everyone, everyone works for different reading speeds, but that's, that's mine. So I've got about nine hours ish left, I think. Sprints are gonna be for a couple of hours. So I definitely will be able to get quite a bit of this read, I think. But I'm also going to be playing my Switch tonight on Sprints whilst I listen because I am getting a new Switch delivered today. And I'm very excited. Hang on, I'm gonna put this down. So today arriving is the white OLED switch. I have purchased myself the OLED switch. 
I have had my Switch for five years now. It was one of the OG ones when they first came out and I love it and it's great. And I absolutely love playing things like Animal Crossing, Splatoon, Mario Kart, but it's just become a little bit old and I can see at times it is slower. The battery life isn't as great. I know the screen size on this new one is bigger, which I'm very excited about. Although I'm gonna have to put a glass screen protector on it and I hate putting screen protectors on. Don't like any dust under it. So it's always a bit of a, a pressure thing, but I'm gonna do that later when it arrives. So I'm just really excited. I thought it was about time for an upgrade. So I have done that and it arrives between 12.30ish and 1.30ish. So I'm gonna be sat by the window then just waiting. <laughs> but I, yeah, I can't wait. I've always enjoyed playing video games, but I more in recent years have gone for like the calmer games mixed in with the more aggressive games. I, as a teenager and still now, I really enjoyed Call of Duty and do enjoy that now still, apart from the fact that there are massive upgrades every month, which, it's just takes like so long to upgrade so you want to sit down and play it and you've just got this huge upgrade which always really bugs me and yes I could tactfully actually learn when the upgrade's coming out and do in advance I know I could do that but I don't so it's nice to balance it with the switch games things like Animal Crossing and things that are just a bit calmer and just have that kind of mindfulness to them so I I love it it makes me feel very relaxed so I'm gonna be doing that tonight on sprints and reading listening to the audiobook alongside I think I'm gonna get the new Pokemon game that came out on Friday because I've been waiting to get that on the bigger screen so I can really see the screen size being utilized but very excited for that so that's the week well that's not the week that's the day <laughs> the week I don't know we'll, we'll be picking books I, I don't know what they're gonna be yet I'm going back to my family home on Friday because I've got an eyebrow appointment and nail appointment on Saturday and I don't think there are any further plans oh I actually have a bit of a change that is, I think is gonna be happening. I'm gonna tell you about it quick. So my current wall, how? let's turn you around here. Okay, this is my like feature wall. I have my mirror in shot, that's gonna be annoying. Oh, well. this is my feature wall. This is one thing I knew I wanted when I moved here was either a bright yellow wall or a tealy green slash darker green wall. Now I went with the yellow. Yellow, I think everyone always thinks, just assumes that I'm really, really obsessed with yellow and it's my absolute favorite color. I do love yellow and yes, I have a yellow car. Green and yellow are my favorite colors. I think I prefer green if I had to pick. But the reason that I love having yellow around me is I find it is a massive positive color and it makes me feel happy. And throughout my younger teen years and into some of my adult years, I've, I've struggled on and off with mental health in more ways than just OCD and anxiety related things. And I've learned a couple of small things that I've been able to do along that time that, that help. And it sounds really silly, but something is having the kind of positive bright colours around me. It, it's not something that's going to be a massive solver of everything, but it, it's, it certainly adds that little bit of serotonin for me. As, and it's something that I've just personally found. It might not make a difference to other people, but for me, it has helped. And I knew I wanted something like that in my flat. So I did this wall. <laughs> Here it is. However... I think it's time for a change. And I know I've only been here for like a year and a half and yeah, I've not had it that long, but I've got a couple of things that I'm not so happy with, with it annoyingly. And yeah, I, I'm gonna change it. <laughs> so the reasons that I'm gonna change it is I love this wall, but I don't know if it actually gives me the warm, cozy feel I want in this room versus just kind of changing its tone in the light to something that I'm not as much of a big fan of. So I think I love it on a summer's day when the natural light is in and is shining on there. I absolutely love it. And it's very warm to the point where bugs come and land on it when the doors are open because they think it's just something great for them to land on a flower or something. But it's just not that color most of the time. And I find that a little annoying. And yes, I should have probably thought about that more. But how was I to know? So anyway, <laughs> I think that's the problem when it's a bright color. It changes quite a lot depending on the lighting around it. Also, I've said this before, I'm going on such a ramble about this. Oh well, context. <laughs> I've said this before, but in my videos and in my photos and stuff, that color you're seeing right now is not the color I am seeing with my eyes. I am seeing a warm yellowish orangey kind of, not quite orange, but like a warm toned yellow that is cozy and summery. What I'm seeing when I'm looking at my viewfinder is more of a zesty, sharp yellow that is kind of bitter, lemon yellow maybe. That's more what I'm seeing in the viewfinder. And that is what I see in any photos I take. And that is what I see reflected in my face whenever I film when that's not behind me, it's very sepia. And that is really bugging me. And I'm not changing my whole wall because of how it looks in my content. That is not why I'm doing it. There's many reasons, but that is certainly something that plays on my mind. I, I take a lot of 
videos and take little photos and that is not what that colour looks like. And I would love a background that I felt that I felt I could film in front of. I never use this as a background unless I'm sat on that sofa. I will never film in front of this wall because it's just not what I like the look of in my videos. So yeah. All of those reasons to say I'm changing the wall. I'm gonna be making it green. I haven't quite settled on the tone of green, but I want something that's not quite like a bright green, not quite like too dark, but like a muted, not a soft green, <laughs> like a dark khaki that isn't quite khaki. <laughs> I don't really know what the green is gonna be. It's not gonna be light. It is gonna be dark and it's gonna be an obvious feature wall, but it's not going to be quite as dark as the one that I've got in my bedroom back at my family home. If anyone's kind of remembered what that one looks like, I don't know. I'm, I'm still in the progress of figuring it out. And the thing that I'm gonna think is gonna be really annoying is, hang on, I'll move the camera up a bit to show you. So these fairy lights, these are all wired. I actually switched these at the weekend when my friend was here because we could both do it. But I had, um, I don't know what they're called if they're not wired fairy lights, more like Christmas tree fairy lights with the plastic casing around them. I had those going all the way around here, exactly the same like order of lights, but I, they, they just looked really crap the way they lit up around the plastic and stuff. I didn't, I didn't like it personally against the yellow of the wall. So I changed to these copper ones, which match the ones over there on those bookshelves. However, I am gonna have to take them down and there is 50 meters of them. And I don't know how to do that without completely buggering up all the lights and tangling them all together. I think I'm gonna like get little clips and clip the bits that are currently hooked onto the wall. So hopefully they don't tangle too much, but that's gonna be fun. <laughs> There you go. If any of you enjoy hearing about my interior design journey, that is, that's where we're currently at. And that is what we'll be changing. I, I don't know when, but I think it'll be in the next month or so. I really, really want to just kind of do it. I've been thinking about doing it for about eight months now. This is not something I've taken lightly. There are many, many thoughts going on in my head for it. But yeah, those ones I shared are kind of the main things I'm thinking about and hopefully will help to make it a little bit cozier because it is cozy in here it definitely is and certainly when i'm looking this way like hang on <laughs> this way <laughs> that's really cozy and i always feel cozy in here but from this way it is cozy but it isn't i can't place it i don't know it's not got as much of the warmth as i want not the green is going to be a warm color but it's gonna go it's gonna work it's gonna happen i i'm i can see it but <laughs> i just can't explain it anyway i have been rambling for a very long time so i hope you enjoy this vlog welcome and I hope you enjoy probably seeing me cry over Crescent City, over House, what is it called? House of Earth and Blood. The city, series is Crescent City. So confusing. Anyway, yeah, that's, that's the, uh, the plans. Hi, bye. See you on my next update. Hello, it is Monday evening and my Switch arrived. It arrived at like, I think 12.30ish, like pretty much when it said it was going to, and I've just been letting everything download. Ever since then, it was a little bit stressful to set up because all the games transfer over like normal apart from Animal Crossing and you have to do that separately. However, when you transfer all the games over, it erases your login on the other Switch. So I had to write, like work out the right way to do it. It was a stressful time, but I have now got it all sorted. Here it is. Tonight I am, um, I think, well, I'm doing sprints tonight, but I think I'm gonna play Pokemon Legends Arceus or Arceus. Arceus probably sounds better because Arceus sounds like ass. Anyway, I've also downloaded Toe Jam and Earl, which I am so excited about. It's this one here, if it's gonna focus properly, which it probably isn't. This is a game from the 90s and I used to play it with my mum in the early noughties, I think, and we loved it. It's just ridiculous. It's Toe Jam and Earl, two characters who kind of just walk around this planet system, trying not to fall off the edge and not to get attacked by certain characters. And it's just fun and just easy playing and my mum is very excited that I've just discovered it on the Switch store so we're going to be playing that at the weekend I think. So yes I'm going to be playing a little bit on my Switch tonight with Patreon sprints at the same time as listening to House of Earth and Blood. But I also have some books that I forgot to show you earlier that I got over the weekend so I'm going to do a little haul for you. It's only two but tiny haul. So I picked up these two from Oxford. I got All the Light We Cannot See. This is by Anthony Doer, who is the same author as Cloud Cuckoo Land, which I read last month, this month, what month are we in now? Still in January. I read this book, I read Cloud Cuckoo Land this month and I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. This has honestly never been a book that has appealed to me before and I can see why when I look at the blurb because I think I've read the blurb before and the start of the blurb I'm like yes absolutely. And then the last part of the blurb I'm like mm, it's not overly the kind of thing I would normally pick up but I enjoyed his other books so much that I want to give this a go. So I'm gonna like tell you what I mean with the kind of 
Division of the Blurb. From Marie Law, blind since the age of six, the world is full of mazes. The miniature of a Paris neighbourhood made by her father to teach her the way home. The microscopic layers within the invaluable diamond that her father guards in the Museum of Natural History. So that part I'm interested by. The walled city by the sea where her fa where father and daughter take refuge when the Nazis invade Paris, and a future which draws her even closer to Werner, a German orphan destined to labour in the mines until a broken radio fills his life with possibility and brings him to the notice of the Hitler Youth. In this magnificent, deeply moving novel, the stories of Murray Mary Law and Werner illuminate the ways against all odds people try to be good to one another. Now, I don't normally go for wartime-esque books, I just really don't tend to enjoy them as much, however I'm willing to change that, I'm willing to try and read a bit wider, and I loved Cloud Cookie Land, so I am hoping I will really enjoy this too. The other book I got is Heaven by Miko Kawakami. I also have Breast and Eggs by the same author, but I haven't yet read that one. However, this one, not however, like as well as, <laughs> this one sounds really interesting. This follows a 14 year old boy who is subjected to relentless torment for having a lazy eye, and instead of resisting, he suffers in silence, and then he makes friends with the only person who can understand, which is his female classmate Kojima, who experiences similar treatment at the hands of the bullies. And this is all about the bond that they form because of that and the friendship that they have and it just sounds lovely but also probably something that's going to make me sad because I cannot I cannot deal with bullying in storylines I was bullied quite a lot as a child when I was in secondary school and it just makes me sad reading about it but also I think it's going to be a really lovely novel I hope so yeah it's very small as well so I think it should be hopefully not too daunting whereas Breast and Eggs is a lot bigger so I bought these two books and I got a switch and I'm gonna go on Patreon live sprints now. If you ever want to join these they are linked down below. I'm doing roughly two a week throughout February pretty much and I will continue to do quite a lot into March as well and going forward in general so it's a good time. All linked down below, available to all tiers. I'm saying you to read soon. We're sprinting but Eco has come to say hi. There he is. Hey dude. Say hello. 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 A spiky bean. <laughs> He's proper posing. Hold on, let me, I'll try and get a shot of his belly for you. <laughs> Is the belly oh! the best part? Oh, look at him. He's so happy. He's so cuddly. <laughs> Hello. You joined me at my TBR cart. I need to pick one of these four. This is kind of an additional, if I finish the books in time, I'll get to this one in February. I need to pick one of these four because it's the 1st of February and I can start my February TBR and I don't know which one to pick because I need to be tactical. This is really good lighting, really good. Okay, so these are my books. I have to be tactical because I think I made a blunder yesterday by saying this is really bad lighting. It's not great anywhere. I made a blunder yesterday by saying that um, House of Sky and Breath comes out on the 14th. It's actually the 15th. I don't know why I had the 14th. So it doesn't really make much of a difference, but whatever I finish from here, I need to then, whatever I pick, sorry, not finish, whatever I pick from here, I need to then be able to finish that by the 15th. So with that in mind, these two are kind of, what is, the, like, I mean, I don't know why I thought this was acceptable at all to film in here, but here we are. These two are what I believe to be the ones that will be quicker to read potentially. So I don't know if I wanna read these first or read these after House of um, Earth and Breath. Sky, Earth, Sky and Breath, good God. <laughs> House of Sky and Breath. So we have Pages and Co, The Book Smugglers, and Things I Learned and Things I Still Don't Know About. One's a poetry book, one is a middle grade. I also have Portrait of a Thief, and I have The Phone Box at the Edge of the World, which I feel like if I finished these two here, I could then read this one. I'm tempted to do that because I feel like it will give me the good boost that I don't feel like I've got as many books sat on top of me to read after I finished House of Sky and Breath. So I think it will be these two. I think. I still need to finish House of Earth and Blood. Sound the same. Oh, it's like they're a series or something. Still need to finish that. So yeah, I, I need to get a move on with that. I think, hang on, let's go have a look where I'm at with that. So I still haven't even picked what I'm reading. I'm leading towards Pages and Co. I think that's what it'll be. Hang on, where's the blooming book? Here it is. So this is where I'm at. I have around halfway. I intend to play a lot of uh, my Switch later tonight. So I will listen to this whilst I am running around catching Pokemon. But I do shortly need to do my keyboard lesson. And this is a very moving around update for the vlog, isn't it? And then, yeah, I don't really have any plans other than that. So I think, I think I'm gonna go for Pages and Co. I think that's gonna be what I pick. I'll let you know. <laughs> That'll be my next update, but I'm still, 
buzzing from Patreon sprints last night. That was so much fun. I don't know, I can't remember what I filmed, but I think I think I filmed the Eco Lauren's pet bearded dragon had a kilt on, which was very cute. God, that's yellow. <laughs> very cute kilt. Go over here. It's still yellow. Oh man, I can't master this lighting. I love the kind of blue lighting in here, but the yellow lighting in front of me needs to be, needs some work. Um, we're just gonna stand here for a little bit. Yes, that was really fun last night. But also, I've kind of been thinking about something today and yesterday and prior to that. I've been thinking about Twitch. So I I really enjoy playing games and I'm getting back into it now. I've got this new Switch. Like I've always been playing my Switch, but I am really loving this new Pokemon game as well. I thought, oh, how, how would Twitch work for me? Would that be a good idea? Would that be too much content? I don't know. So what I've done is I've created a Twitch account and I've just left it at that. I don't know what it's gonna be, but there's several games I like playing that I would quite enjoy to maybe stream. But I, I don't know if it's gonna be my kind of thing or not. I don't know if it's anything anyone would want to see. I know that you can obviously do other things on there and maybe reading sprints and stuff, but I don't know what the gain from doing those on Twitch would be versus doing them on YouTube, where obviously I've already got my subscribers that would want to watch on YouTube. So I don't know if I'd necessarily use it for that as much as I would for streaming the games, but it just looks quite good fun. So I quite like the idea of that. So I don't know, that might be, might be something that happens. I've created the account, I'm Books Nest there if you do want to go and check that out. But at the moment it's just empty or is at the time of filming this. So I'm very intrigued because it has me kind of excited at the idea of it. I don't like to not have plans in motion and projects on the go, which is why I just seem to be doing everything and anything I can think of when it comes to creating content. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, this is this is good, hopefully, maybe, <laughs> or it's gonna be completely too much. I don't know, I'm gonna decide, but right now I'm gonna go do my piano lesson and then I'm gonna start Pages & Co, The Book Smugglers. And then I'm gonna make some dinner. I don't know what that's gonna be because I have not done any food shopping and I don't intend to this week. I'm gonna try and get through the week without food shopping because I go back home on Friday, which right now seems quite a way away, <laughs> but I think I can do it. I think I can make it work. Anyway. I'll catch up with you later at some point. I don't know when. Definitely going to read. I'm not just gonna let myself play Pokemon all night, she says. Anyway, I don't know what this update's been. Feels like a mess, but maybe those are the more, more fun kind of updates. Um, yeah, well, that's it. Bye. <laughs>
and stream and have a chat whilst I do it. Completely new territory. I am not fantastic at any of these games, I just enjoy them, so I'm just gonna be there to have a good time. And I'm gonna maybe do my first stream next week. I'm just trying to get everything ready, but I'm very excited. My username is booksnest on Twitch, if you do wanna follow me, it's the same as it is here. I need to add it below in the caption. I don't know if I'll have done that by the time you're watching this, but editing Beth, add your Twitch link. I'm excited, I am excited gonna be good. It's gonna be even more content because apparently I just like to pile it on myself like this but I'm okay with that because I enjoy the feeling of being busy. The reason we're sat here today is I, you probably can't even tell because I never have my camera at this angle anyway. I need to work on this artboard a little bit behind me and sort that out but I've not like redone as such but I've tidied up and sorted out my desk a little bit. I had so many cables and wires and I had these what are they call the LED strip lights on the back of my screens and my monitors that were just falling off. There was cables everywhere. They weren't very bright lights. It just looked meh. I was like, I want this to look better because I want to use this as a filming background, but also if I'm going to spend more time in here, I want it to look a bit better. So I have added some better lights, which you can kind of see. I'm absolutely loving it. I can control it all through an app and it just put themes on it, very excited. So I have better lights now, which is great. This is something I've been meaning to do for quite a while because I keep disliking my desk layout and I don't really know why. It's a decent sized desk, it has everything I need. It just didn't really feel very cozy. It felt very industrial and very cable heavy. So sorting the cables out was fun, but they are all sorted kind of as much as they can be. And I have cool glowing lights as well as a potato light. Hang on, I have to show you the potato light. So the potato light is new. <laughs> it came from Urban Outfitters. It's not got any charge in it at the moment because I've had it on all day, but it basically just lights up and it's really cute. I haven't decided what to name it yet. I was kind of thinking something like Samwise or something because potatoes, potatoes, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. But he's just, he's really cute. If anyone's seen my dumpling light in my lounge, he's kind of of the same family as the dumpling light with Urban Aptus little squidgy lights. And he's just so cute. I'm gonna pop him on charge and I'll show you tomorrow when he's lit up or later today. I'll show you at some point. So yeah, exciting, exciting things. I got lights, well, upgraded my lights. I got a potato <laughs> and I have reading updates and I also have some book mail. So reading updates. I did, I had, I don't even know what I told you last. Had I decided that I was reading this? I'm reading this. This is Pages & Co, The Book Smugglers. This is the fourth book in the Pages & Co series by Anna James. Started it on, I don't even know, whenever the first was, Tuesday. I'm up to page 135. This is a middle grade, so I would like to be a little bit further along than I am because it does read easier. But honestly, I think, it's a bit a bit slower for me because we're starting with a different character than who we would normally follow and we are going between the two of them but the first hundred or so pages was with a different character and it kind of threw me a little bit because I like this other character but I really enjoy Tilly's perspective on things and that's what I love about this series the way that she sees things in the bookshop she lives in especially the bookshop she lives in so as much as it's still really interesting to follow this other character I think to start with I was like oh okay right I had to readjust the way I was reading it so I think that threw me a little bit but not in a bad way like I'm still really enjoying it but I, I'm excited to see where the story goes I'm gonna read this on sprints tonight I'm sprinting in an hour or so I need to do some dinner sprinting with my patrons for a couple of hours this evening and gonna hopefully I don't know if it's bold to say try and finish this but it does have pictures and it is big font and it's in the middle grade so how many pages have I got left okay I have over 200 pages maybe that is bold to say I'm gonna try and read as much of it as possible that is my plan for the evening so I have two bits of book mail. I'm gonna sing you the book mail song. I'm gonna tell you what they are, although you can already see one of them, but no, you can't. <laughs> book mail, book mail, book mail, book mail, books came in the mail, hey. So first off, I was sent an early copy of The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. This was sent to me by the publishers and oh my gosh, it's absolutely stunning. This lighting complements this book very well. I think, hang on, can I, I wanna see if I can make the lights behind me the color of the book cover because why the hell not? I want to film in the spot a bit more. I don't use my office as much as I would because I find my office chair really uncomfortable. I mean, I know I said about the desk not being quite right and stuff, but sorted that all. My office chair is really uncomfy, but my work are very generously buying me a new office chair and I'm very excited about it. So that is such a stupid thing to be excited about, but it's pretty. So once that's here, I hope that I'm gonna have a better experience so I can sit in here more because this just hurts. Okay, what kind of colors have we got? Like blues and pinks? Right, this is blues and pinks, kind of. It's kind of the cover. Hang on, let's continue. Actually, that's really similar. Like those are the color, it's not gonna focus, but that's the color choices. Bear with, I'm gonna see if I can find a better one. This one is literally called Blue Planet. I feel like that works. Or oh, this one, Soho. Oh, that's what I already had it on. <laughs> oh God. 
I'm just playing about with lights now. Oh, that one. That one. I want it to have pink in it. Okay, there we go. There's the light setting to match the book, kind of. This is the book. I'm going to read you the blurb. Oh, it's quite a long blurb. Okay, we're going to go for it. Deadly storms, an ancient curse, will her sacrifice save them all? For generations, deadly storms have ravaged Mina's homeland. Her people believe the sea god, once their protector, now curses them with death and despair. To appease him each year, a maiden is thrown into the sea in the hopes that one day the true blood... To... Let's try that again. The true bride will be chosen and end the suffering. Many believe Shim Cheong, Mina's brother's beloved, to be the legendary true bride. But on the night Cheong is to be sacrificed, Mina's brother follows her, knowing that to interfere is a death sentence. To save her brother, Mina throws herself into the water in Cheong's stead. Swept away to the spirit realm, magical city of lesser gods and mythical beasts, Mina finds the sea god trapped in an enchanted sleep. With the help of a mysterious young man and a motley crew of demons, gods and spirits, Mina sets out to wake him and bring an end to the storms once and for all. But she doesn't have much time. A human cannot live long in the land of the spirits. There are those who would do anything to keep the sea god from waking. I love the sound of this. It says it's a feminist, magical feminist retelling of a classic Korean legend, perfect for fans of Uprooted and Spirited Away. Okay, Spirited Away terrifies me for two reasons. One, the fact that parents are turned into pigs is a very terrifying concept, especially watching that as a child. Two, I really don't like elongated limbs, like, like cartoon drawn way too long limbs. I just don't like them. And there is a man in Spirited Away that has like limbs that are really, 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 really long. And it scares me. Elongated limbs scare me. So that scares me. But this book sounds amazing. Yeah, this looks absolutely stunning. The cover, beautiful. It matches my lights. Very, very happy. I also have a package through. I don't know what this is gonna be. I'm pretty sure one of my patrons has sent me something through, which is incredibly kind of them. And I'm very excited. Oh, so it is Jodie Pickles, The Book of Two Ways. I saw this in Waterstones recently and I opted to buy Ava a book instead of myself a book, which is incredibly self-restrained of me. But I have just been bought this one. This has come from a stitch of books. Thank you so, so, so much. This is really kind. I'm gonna tell you guys what this is about. I love the cover. Wait, do we have to match the lighting again? Is this a thing we're doing? I think it's a thing we're doing. Okay, I think it matches, kind of. We've got the sunset colors. Anyway, right. This I thought this sounded really, really interesting when I saw it in the bookshop. I have, have I read any Jodie Pickle before? I don't think I have. Anyway, the blurb. Every life has, a piv has pivotal moments, choices that send you down one path or another. What if you had a chance to change the decisions you've made? Dawn helps people prepare for a good death, but when she finds herself in mortal danger, the life that flashes before her eyes is not the one she shares in Boston with her beloved husband and daughter, but the life she left behind in Egypt 15 years ago, a career in archeology span and a man she loved. Safe again, Dawn finds herself faced with an unexpected decision to go back home to the world she knows or to try to recapture the world she lost but is there a cost to turning back time? I think this sounds really interesting. And the reason I added it to my wish list is because I feel like there's pivotal points in all our lives where we think, what direction is my life gonna go in? And I think this would be really interesting to see that in a reflective way from the character that has already kind of picked one of those directions. And yeah, it sounds really, really interesting. And I cannot wait to read it. Thank you so much to Marsha from A Stitch of Books on social media for buying this for me. I cannot wait to read it. That is so, so kind of you. Thank you. Okay. I think that was my long-winded update out of the way. I'm gonna go and do some dinner now because I have an hour, just under an hour, over, just over an hour until sprints and I need to get set up. Also this chair, can you hear this chair squeaking? It's so squeaky, I cannot wait to get a new chair. I am very excited. I don't know when it's arriving, but it's it's been ordered. It's gonna happen. It's kind of blue-ish. It's frost blue, I think it's called. Anyway, I'm just rambling now. Hi, I'm gonna go eat. Happy reading. <laughs> Hello friends. It is sometime later on Thursday and I have finished my book. This is the power of Patreon reading sprints. I absolutely love that these are dedicated times to just sit and read. I always, whenever I like have to tell someone that doesn't do this kind of thing or isn't within the book community and doesn't partake in sprints, what a sprint is, they always look at me really blankly like I had to explain it to some friends the other day and they were just like, what? So you just, you just sit and read together? I'm like, well, yeah, kind of, we're all in different places. It's all online. And like it's a live stream and we're all reading together but not together because we're not physically with each other but we are together because it's online it's community and they just look at me like what but i love reading sprints they work they hold me accountable i have finished my book and i, re I really liked it and i've really enjoyed having this dedicated time especially recently to just sit down and read it's nice it carves out the time in my day so yes this is a four star read from me i liked it but i didn't absolutely love it it's i think 
the last two in this series I haven't liked as much as I did the first two. I like the characters a lot but as I said earlier we were following a different character for a good chunk of this book and I think that that might be a kind of direction this series goes in now and I don't know how I feel about that. Also the ending was very open-ended and I get why because that's how this series kind of writes. It's, it is like that, it leads on to the next book quite quickly and is on a cliffhanger but I almost feel like I'm not getting the satisfaction out of the ending that I kind of want from that but I completely understand why it's done. I think as a reader I just like to kind of close off more loose ends than this did. It did close off loose ends but yeah I wanted, I wanted a couple more answers before it ended <laughs> but I still think it was really good and it works because it means I want to pick up book five which isn't even out yet so I need book five. Yes, thanks to Patreon Sprints for being able to finish that. I think doing two a week as well is hopefully going to keep me up to date with my TBR, which is a good thing. So that means I am going to be reading this next. This is The Things I Learned and the Things I Still Don't Know About by Talitha Wing. This is a poetry collection and I'm hoping to start this tonight. It is nearly midnight, but I'm going to go shower, get ready for bed and then read a little bit of this in bed. I've got fresh bedding, which I'm very, very excited about because it's still got that like fabric softener smell and I've got a lavender oil burner going on. It's going to be a great time. So anyway, <laughs> this is what I'm going to be reading today and tomorrow I will try and finish this tomorrow maybe on my lunch break if I depending on if I how much like I stay up tonight to read but I don't like to rush poetry because I feel like it's you read it in a different way but I want to be able to bring the phone box at the edge of the world is that what it's called the edge of the world back with me this weekend I'm going back to my family home tomorrow night so I want to bring that one back with me this weekend and give that a go and then I am definitely on track of my TBR to then slow down a bit when it comes to reading House of Sky and Breath which I will just want to quickly apologise if I've been saying House of Air and Breath at any point because apparently I've been typing that when I've been talking about it online. I've been typing Air and Breath. I don't know if I've been saying Air and Breath, but it's Sky and Breath. I don't know why I'm struggling with this title so much, but apparently I am. Great. Anyway, those are my two reading updates. I am going to get ready for bed now and read this in bed for a little bit. Oh, that is a very bright light. That literally just hit as soon as I click, click record. Anyway, hi, it's Friday. I cannot wait for the weekend for no specific reason other than I'm just in a pretty good mood and I'm looking forward to the weekend. I was in a really good mood yesterday. That mood has continued into today. I'm manifesting good things happening. It is working and yeah, I'm just feeling feeling pretty good. So I have a couple of updates. I'm also gonna sign the vlog off here because I don't think I'm gonna read much more today and I'm just gonna be going back to my family home today and keep it a vlog free weekend. But doing some DIY this weekend, kind of. I don't know if you can even call it DIY, probably not. There are shelves there normally and I've taken the shelves off, they're in my hands, because I'm going to be staining them or varnishing them, whatever the term is, a walnut colour that's going to be kind of this table colour. Not that you can really see, but it's got all the plants on it. It's not going to focus, but... The table colour, it's going to be that colour. I'm going to be varnishing these and taking them back to my family home because I think it's going to be easier to do them in the garden than it is on my balcony. So that's kind of DIY-y kind of, and then once the green wall is there, it's all gonna look really nice, blended in with the brown and the green, it's gonna, it's gonna be great. I also have a reading update. I said last night I was gonna start the things I learned and the things I still don't know about in bed last night, and I did, and I stayed up reading it because it was absolutely brilliant. This is a poetry collection by Talitha Wing, and I would say this is perfect for people who are kind of in that stage of life where you're not a child, you're not a young adult, you're kind of entering into the, the next phase of where you're going with your life and you're kind of still in that kind of part where you're trying to figure everything out and look back and be reflective and things because that is what this just made so relatable. There were so many parts in this that I just thought was so relatable. I, I starred a couple of them but my favourite one, hang on, my favourite one is one called Count Yourself. I'm not going to like read it to you because I, I want people to be able to read the book and discover it themselves but this talks about the idea of when you've worked really hard to achieve something and just call it lucky that you've got there or that you have been lucky to get there and it almost can sometimes take away from all the effort that you put in and the work that you put in and it says to actually say that you are magnificent and brilliant instead of lucky because you've managed to achieve that. And there was just so much in this that I just thought was really, really good. If you're the kind of person that likes poetry, especially modern poetry that is just really beautiful to read but isn't too daunting as well, I would highly recommend this. This is a debut poetry collection, so I'm just trying to give it some love. It's really fantastic. You can order it on Waterstones. I think there's a 10 day wait to order it on Waterstones, but I'm sure you can find it in other places as well. But yeah this book. So I gave that five stars and then this morning I started the phone box at the edge of the world. This is a lot heavier than I expected in subject matter 
but lighter than I expected in writing. So I didn't realise how centric around grief this would be. This follows immediately, which tells us it follows a main character whose mum and her daughter have died in a tsunami, and this is all following the aftermath of that tsunami. It's the 2011, March 2011 tsunami, and this is following one of the characters that was a survivor of this, but does no longer have her family. And it's her journey finding this phone box that people say your voice is whispered into the atmosphere, the air, there's probably a better word for it than that, but the voice is carried away and you can talk to people that are no longer with you. So I don't know if there's gonna be a fantasy magical realism element to this, but at the moment it's certainly a heavier subject matter than I expected, but I'm, I'm okay with that. It's actually a really quick read as well. Like I only read it for about 40 minutes this morning. I'm 60 pages in, it's quite an easy, writing style and I've been highlighting and tabbing and things because I just am really enjoying the way it's written. So this one is a good pick I think to go before House of Sky and Breath. Sky? Sky yeah? Air? Sky? Sky. House of Sky. As I said yesterday I'm pretty sure I've been saying it wrong but <laughs> I just don't know why it won't stay in my brain. Anyway, so this is what I'm going to be reading over the weekend, going home after work, of course bringing my Switch and I hope to start streaming on Twitch next week or this week by the time you're watching this. So yeah, do check that out. I'll try and remember to link it below but it's Books Nest if not. Also Patreon sprints last night just have made me feel so good this morning too so I will be doing two more Patreon sprints next week or again this week and then the week after. I think I'm doing two that week as well maybe more. I, it's, there's, there's a lot of sprints going on at the moment. It's so much fun. It makes my evening, as I said last night, really. It, I think it helps put me in these kind of positive moods. So thank you so much to anyone who turned up there and has supported me. That is all linked down below as well if you wanted to check it out. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. If you did enjoy, please do give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what you've been reading this week and subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. And as I said, all my Patreon stuff is linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.